2020 continues. Is there proof of heaven? Once again, Elizabeth Vargas. Eight million Americans claim to have had a near-death experience, but neurosurgeon Eben Alexander never thought in a thousand years he would be one of them. What did you think those were? Fantasies, hallucinations. He was a man of science. He didn't believe in it. That is, he says, until it happened to him. Let's talk about how you got sick. You woke up in the middle of the night feeling ill and in pain. It was like being struck by a freight train. 4.30 in the morning, woke up, never had anything like that before. My last words to my wife, don't call 911. You know, trust me, I'm a doctor, it's just a muscle spasm. And, and I was gone. Dr. Alexander had a rare and deadly form of bacterial meningitis, which was infecting his brain. In a matter of hours, this healthy man was on death's door. By the time they got him to the hospital, he was in a coma. So your wife was being told that you might die? And that she would be raising our two boys without me. But as his body lay in that hospital bed with no recognizable brain activity, Dr. Alexander says he had already begun an astounding journey. A journey to a place he'd said didn't exist. Did you believe in heaven? When I was younger, I thought a heaven and a loving God made sense. But through my academic neurosurgery career, um, I saw less and less that that could be the case. The journey began, he says, in a dark, formless place without memory, language, or time. But then... I was rescued from that by the spinning melody of light that came closer and opened up and was a, a rip in the fabric of reality that just opened up around me. You described this world as hyper-vivid. The colors were extremely vivid with millions of butterflies and these flowers blooming, blossoms opening as we flew by. And by his side, an unknown presence. There was a, a person guiding you, a, a, a beautiful girl, as you describe her. Can, tell me what she looked like. She had a beautiful face with a, a, a wide smile and uh, high cheekbones and absolutely gorgeous, clear blue eyes. She never said a word to me. She would look at me and the thoughts would come directly into my, into my mind, into my awareness. What thoughts? And the thoughts were, you are loved, you are cherished. There's nothing you can do wrong. I always remember being told, we will teach you many things, but you'll be going back. Back to the hospital where his wife kept her vigil and his doctors were giving up hope. On the seventh day of his coma, he opened his eyes. It was just nothing but a miracle. His first words, the very words he'd heard from his guide, that blue-eyed girl. All is well. Don't worry, all is well. Within weeks, Eben Alexander had made an astonishing full recovery. How are you different after going through this experience? Well. My family says I'm nicer. Uh, <laughs> That's I would a good say, thing. Uh, really has changed me in every way by realizing that our souls are eternal. The book he has written, Proof of Heaven, has sparked a lot of controversy. As you know, you do have skeptics out there who are just saying it's not uncommon for people near death to have all sorts of funky things going on inside their bodies. Well, that's why the fact that I had meningitis that was so severe. I mean, that should not have allowed for any experience. And then this with the eyes just okay, shows how... Means his brain was so way, completely this shut way. down that the visions he had the could simply not have been generated there. Girl. He says he wrote down everything he remembered, now in his book, before speaking to anyone so as not to taint his memory. You then went on to read about other people's near-death experiences. Was it striking how similar what you had written was to what they had experienced? It was absolutely astonishing. I really felt the white light was God. I stopped walking and I saw my grandma. You could see peace, you could see love. And all the other afterlife stories, everybody 
told of being guided by a loved one who had died. You had as your guide a girl you'd never met. I must say that was very haunting. Why would I go through all that and not have my father there? My father, who was a neurosurgeon, I idolized him, and he had passed over four years earlier. Why wasn't he there? And why the blue-eyed girl instead? Dr. Alexander had been adopted as a child. Years later, he found his birth family, all except for one, his birth sister, who died before he met them. Her name was Betsy. How old was she when she died? She was uh, 36 years old. So Betsy you'd never met? I just heard what a beautiful, loving soul she was. How she, how she worked in a, in a, a rape crisis center and took care of many people who were unfortunate. And she was just a very loving, mm -hmm. loving person. How was it that you came to see a picture of her? My birth sister, Kathy, had promised to send me a picture of Betsy. And it was about four months after my coming out of the hospital when that picture arrived. He opened the envelope and saw it for the first time. The photo, he says, was of that blue-eyed girl from his vision. And it was so stunning. And that picture was almost as if she's saying, do you get it? now and I cannot tell you how powerful that was there was no mistaking it that's exactly who it was life is back to normal at the Alexander household these days there are soccer games to watch dinners to be shared grace to be said but dr. Alexander says he's on a mission now I hope to tell my story to everyone I possibly can around this world because I think it will help this world to be a much better place.